What's up, Troy? It's Happy Holidays from Joe Shift, and here we are, the Best Buy Theater for an epic night of New York heavy metal. We have Life of Agony, we have Vision of Disorder, Biohazard, and you can't forget Seventh Void. I'm personally so fucking pumped and excited. I want to thank everybody who's coming tonight to the show, and those of you who can't make it, this one is for you. Happy New Year, and remember, 2011 is the time to fucking raise the horns. Wait up. From the Best Buy Theater here, I'm here. <laughs> All right. From the Best Buy Theater in Times Square, in New York, I'm here with Tim Williams from Vision of the Sorter. Who cares who I am? We're here for these guys. Welcome. How you doing, man? How's everybody doing out there? Last show we talked, and you guys kicked ass, and you had talked about a bigger show. I didn't know it was going to be with Lava Agony, yeah. Biohazard, and Seventh. I don't, I don't know if I knew that. Maybe I knew that then. That was in the summer, so I didn't know about it, but here we are. It's a family reunion. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was it's definitely cool. I've been out there, I watched some of this stuff, and I uh, caught some of the biohazard stuff, and it's been good. It's so. been a while since you all shared a stage. Oh. Forget it. I don't know if VOD ever even played with biohazard, ever. Blood Simple did a lot of work with them, but uh, VOD never did. And you told me the other day that you're very busy at the moment, and you're happy because of that, and I know you guys are busy right now recording your demo that you're going to shop around. Yeah. How is that? going right now we by the last time we spoke we had wrapped that up we finished that and uh it came out really good it came out fucking amazing i gotta go back and fix a couple of the, the vocals here and there but uh pleasantly surprised myself the song's really really 
took shape in the studio and they're really they're really really good so i think you guys are gonna be happy we almost played one tonight but then we said fuck it well last time you played hard times and i told you i really enjoyed that because it has that evolution that you guys have always been about yeah the shit evolved again the shit we just did is ridiculous it's really really good one of the songs probably would open up the record and it's probably one of the best songs since element it's fucking really really good so you can expect some new material from Vision of Disorder. You heard it first here on Hornstar Rock. I want to thank Tim for the support since day one. Since the first day we met at the Black and Blue Bowl, which is mm-hmm. our hardcore yeah. roots that we were talking before. Right and up. since then, you've been very supportive, and I appreciate it. And happy holidays. I don't care what you celebrate, but tonight we're celebrating our you know, New York hardcore style life, which is our brotherhood and having our backs. And how Biohazard is set. One, two, three, down, four, life. Thank you, Tim Williams, for Vision Disorder. Your last words for the fans. Happy holidays, people. We'll see you uh, in spring. New York City, this is George Shift and from Horns Up Rocks. We're here at the Best Buy Theater right inside, and I'm here with Brandon, guys, from Revolver Magazine. Welcome, brother. Thanks, man. And the reason why I grabbed you is because we're finishing a very, very awesome year. In two, like, I mean, 2010 was a great year for metal. It was. It was. There was a lot of really big releases, and, you know, it was, even if you don't like the bands, but it's really cool to see, like, hard rock metal bands, de- like, debuting number one of the charts, Disturbed, Godsmack, Event Sevenfold, you know, Strong Year, Big Four. That's huge, you know. Never thought I'd see Dave Mustaine on stage with James Hetfield singing Am I Evil and then, like, hugging at the end. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Mind-blowing. And, I mean, obviously you guys had the Revolver Golden Gods Awards, the second version, and you guys fucking killed it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, we worked hard on that, and I think it absolutely blew the first one away. And, you know, for me, being able to uh, honor Ronnie James Dio a month before his death is, you know, something I'll never forget and something that uh, is just magical, you know, just amazing. And I'm really glad we got to do that, and it was such an honor for us. And we were saying before, you just put out your last... Obviously, your last uh, issue of the year, which is basically an honor to all the fallen heroes. Paul Gray from Slipknot, yeah, of course, Steele. Peter Steele from Double Negative, and as you said, Ronnie James Dio. And why don't you take us into a little bit of that process of creating that issue? It was a hard one, man. You know, like a lot, most of the time when you're working on a, you know, hard rock and metal magazine, you know, it's fun, you know, and you're just the fan and you get to cover your favorite bands. When you make an issue like that, there's like a real sense of responsibility. It's like one of those few times when you're doing kind of like real journalism and, you know, you, you fact check everything like 50 times because you don't want to get anything wrong, obviously. And, you know, um, so it was a really hard one to make. And, uh, 
I mean, I have, to, I have to be honest. Like when I was working on like the the Ronnie James Dio tribute uh, story, which was an interview with Wendy Dio, I had a tear in my eye a few times. You know, it's like it's really intense, like working on this stuff and trying to make the best stories, and uh, it, it's you know very emotional. Let's go see Battle Hazard. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't for him and it wasn't for his band, Biohazard wouldn't be here. Life of Agony wouldn't be here. None of these bands would be here. I'm talking about our foreign brother, Big Pete, Pete Steele. I remember Pete called me up in 1987. I said, come over to my house. I want to show you something. And me and Bobby went over there, and he had a, a catalog for like laboratory safety stuff, and uh, had the biohazard symbol in it. And he goes, yo, either you take this name and this symbol and make it your band, or I'm changing the name of Carnivore into that. <laughs> Pete named us Biohazard. So Peter, all this brother is for you, this song is for you. We love you, man. Joe Shelton back here from Backstage at the Best Buy Theater. I'm here with Bobby from Biohazard. What's up, brother? Yo, what up, man? What's An up? amazing night. Is that the... the he's, he's going. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, bro. Thanks for hanging out. I mean, when you guys come to New York every single time, there's no doubt that Biohazard is going to fucking tear the roof off, literally. And that's been happening for a long time since you guys first started playing Lemours back in the day. Right. That was why Biohazard got their name. There were venues that wouldn't have you guys on board because they were afraid of the violence. But it's always been about the unity. A lot of people don't see that. Oh, yeah. But tonight we have Life of Agony, Biohazard, Bishop Disorder, and Seventh Void. Yeah. You can't get more of a family reunion than that. Yeah, because we're all like kind of from the same area, you know. The guys from Seventh Void, Life of Agony, Biohazard. We all kind of grew up in the same place in Brooklyn when we all started our bands together at a very young age. Uh, all basically kind of trailing behind one dude who was like the, we considered a pioneer back then, and that was Pete, Pete Steele, you know. He, uh, you know, th this night is like big because it's it, everybody here is feeling the grief about Pete, and it's kind of, you know, we're trying to keep his name alive and stuff, so it's like... It's, uh, he's really missed, you know, but it's great to see all of us all still playing and uh, the guys in Seventh Void are kicking ass and it's, it's just fucking awesome, you know, life goes on and, and we're just trying to, you know, hold it down. Biohaz is doing a new record and, uh, you know, it's, it's the old original band, so it's like, it's amazing. Like, we didn't even, when I say amazing, I mean I can't even believe it's happening, you know, but it is. And, uh, you know, it's just been a great, it's a great night, you know. And if we play New York, this is the way to do it. With the old bands from the old school, guys that we, guys that we came up with, you know, it's awesome. 
And it's a celebration. And one thing about hardcore has always been, you know, you take tragedy and you make it into something beautiful. That's always been the motto of, especially when it comes to the New York, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Manhattan, Queens, whatever band comes from here, they usually, you know, it's That's a great that. way to put it because if you don't take the tragedy and turn it into something beautiful or positive, like you said, then you die, then you lose, then you fucking, you suffer, you fail, you know what I mean? And hardcore has always been about rising above the struggle, you know, the daily struggle, you know, a lot of great hardcore bands have, have spilled some lyrics that have changed the way people live and the way people feel about themselves.